Okay, just before we went for our break, uh, we were studying Matthew chapter 13, verses uh, 44 to 46, where we looked at uh, two parables that Jesus spoke uh, concerning, you know, um, uh, the treasure in his, um, uh, you know, the king, to va the value of the kingdom of heaven, the value that we need to have uh, for the kingdom of heaven. And so we looked at uh, those two parables there, the, the parable of uh, the treasure in the field and uh, the parable of um, the pearl of great uh, price. So what Jesus was basically saying is that, you know, um, uh, that we, our entire life should be centered and should revolve around the king and his uh, kingdom. That means, you know, when you're studying, you study for the sake of the kingdom. When you're working, you work for the sake of the kingdom. You know, when you go out and you're doing something, you're engaging in some uh, activity, uh, you do it for the sake of the king and the kingdom. That means, you know, whatever drives us, whatever we are doing in life, everything uh, should revolve and should be, uh, uh, should revolve around the king and his kingdom and everything that we do should be for the sake of the uh, kingdom. And uh, that is why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay, so we are, we are asked to seek his kingdom first. Which means, you know, now if we are going to seek his kingdom first, if uh, everything that we do, uh, you know, our life is going to revolve or be centered around the king and the kingdom, uh, everything that we do is for the sake of the king and his kingdom, we need to reorder our lives, okay? Uh, uh, if you're saying yes to all of this, you need to reorder your life, you need to reprioritize everything in your life and where you're saying, God, uh, you know, this is what I want my life to to be about everything in my life is for the king, is all about the king and his kingdom. Uh, it's about me being your son or being your daughter in that kingdom and that everything that I'm doing in this world, God, is uh, for you and for your uh, kingdom. And I want your kingdom within me to invade the world around me. I want your kingdom to invade my, invade my environment. And that is the only reason that I'm here. Uh, so, you know, uh, God, I want you to allow your kingdom to work through me. I want you to allow your kingdom to affect the world around me. And uh, I want to do great and mighty things for your kingdom, even as your kingdom is all powerful and your kingdom is in me. So I hope this will be your prayer. Um, this will be something that, you know, if you are looking at, you know, what is the reason or what is the purpose for my life? You know, we have seen today what is uh, the reason, the purpose for your life. So if you're saying yes to, you know, having the king and his kingdom this being the center of your life and everything that you do, which means you need to reorder your life and reprioritize everything in your uh, life. Okay. Any questions? Any doubts? Any questions? Any doubts? Okay, if not, we will move on. There are two more uh, teachings about the kingdom that Jesus mentions here in the same chapter in uh, Matthew 13, verses 51 to 53. So towards the end of his, this chapter, you know, uh, we, we see that we read that Jesus uh, he returns to disciples and he says, you know, have you understood these things? And then they say to him, yes, Lord. Okay, so... Uh, we see, just can somebody read that please? Matthew 13, 51 to 53. See Jesus, Jesus said, to, said them, to them, Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Now it came to pass 
when Jesus had finished these parables, that he departed from there. Amen. Thank you, Deepu. Uh, so towards the end of this chapter, Jesus is turning to his disciples and he's saying, uh, uh, you know, did you understand all of these things? And they say to him, yes, Lord. So we see that Jesus is being going through parable after the parable, uh, you know, uh, narrating one parable after another. He's talking about different aspects of the kingdom, the sower sowing the seeds, the harvest, the dragnet, the pearl of great price, the treasure, you know, um, uh, the, the parable of the wheat and the tares. And then he comes to this conclusion, asking them, did they understand what he has been talking to them or he's telling them? And they said, you know, yes. And then he says, one more thing I want to say about the kingdom. And Jesus tells them that, you know, um, listen, when you see people, you know, teaching about the kingdom, it's like this. It's like a householder who goes out and gets out of his treasuries old things and new things, okay? So what is Jesus meaning here when he's saying it's like, uh, you know, uh, a, sorry, a treasurer who, you know, uh, 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 who go is like a householder, sorry, who goes and brings out his treasures, things new and uh, old. So what is he meaning by this? So he's saying what Jesus is basically saying is, you know, uh, when you hear about the things of the kingdom, there will be things that are old, things that you've heard in the past, things that you are accustomed to, things that you are already have known about the kingdom, uh, you know, that you will hear again. And there will also be new things about the kingdom that you have not heard about. But he's saying you got to receive both the old and the new. You can't say the old, I've heard this so many times. I know everything. I, I'm accustomed to it. Hey, you might have heard it. You might have, you know it very well. You're accustomed to it. But Jesus is saying that you have to receive both the old and the new. So what does he mean when he says uh, to you and me that, you know, we have to receive both the old and the new? OK, he means this. He's saying, you know, uh, when you're understanding the things concerning the kingdom of God, um, there is what God has already said. There's what God already has spoken. There are things that God has already uh, done. And there is also what God is revealing today, what he's saying today, what he's speaking um, today. Now, what he is saying in the now does not supersede, does not negate, does not violate anything God has said in the past. In fact, what new things God is saying today, now in the present, you know, um, uh, is not something that negates the old. It's not something is doing away with the old or violating what is the old. Okay. But in fact, you know, uh, uh, God is, uh, saying things in the new, okay, uh, which we need to look at, which we need to understand. Um, and you cannot just live by what God is saying in the present now, but you also have to live and uh, uh, know what he has said in the past, what he has spoken in the past, what he has done in the uh, past, okay? So, um, uh, is you know, um, uh, why is it important? Because, you know, if you tend to know only the old, then you're saying that, or you're saying, hey, I'm comfortable with only what God has spoken, you know, then you'll miss out on what God is speaking now or today or in the present or what new thing he is saying. And if you, but if you run only after God in the present or what he's saying today, then you might not understand what he is saying in the present or you will not uh, uh, understand what he's saying now, or, or most likely you will misunderstand or misinterpret what he's saying in the present and he's saying in the now because you've not understood what he has spoken or done in the past. So what 
God is saying in the now has to be understood, has to be interpreted in the light of what he has already revealed, what he has already said, what he has spoken in the past. Okay, Because everything God is speaking in the now is being said in the context of what he has said in the past. Okay, so as people who want to understand the teachings of the kingdom of God, we must have hearts too that are receptive both for the old and the new. Okay, to what has what God has spoken in the past, what He has done in the past, what He said in the past, and also what God is saying uh, now in the present or, or the mysteries that He's trying to reveal to us or help us to understand in the present okay so if we don't know the past we will never be able to understand what god is saying in the present if we don't know what he said in the past we will never be able to uh, uh, interpret it right what he's saying in the present and we'll misunderstand what he's saying in the present so to understand what god is saying and doing in the present now you know we need to understand what he has already uh, said and what's spoken what is written in the scripture in the uh, in the past but if you're saying hey you know i just want to know what god has spoken in the past that's enough for me hey then you will miss out what god is saying in the present and what he's saying in the present validates or um, helps us to understand also what he has said and spoken in the past okay so what god has said in the written word uh, in his written word in scripture what god is saying is his voice of his spirit and that is speaking to you and me right now and we need both so we need both the written word the scripture what god has already spoken which is recorded for us and what god is saying today to us the voice of his spirit we need both of that Okay, and uh, we need to understand that what God is saying today will never contradict or what God is saying now or what God is speaking to us in the present will never contradict what he has said in the past because it's the same God who has spoken in the past and what has been written in scripture is the same God who's speaking to us through the voice of the Holy Spirit so you don't have to be um, afraid so jesus is saying uh, that's how you're going to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven okay so he says if you want to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven if jesus is saying if you want to understand what i'm trying to explain to you now you need to know what i have said and spoken and understand what i have done in the past okay so that goes on to say that god yes is unveiling new things in history is doing a lot of new things you know as a church we just uh, listened to a series of sermon on the end times and you know what god is doing what god is unfolding in the present history in our time in our age uh, you know is all what has been recorded in the word of God and we are just able to see that so what God is doing in the present is what God has already spoken in the past so to understand the present we need to know what he has spoken in the past understand that that will help us to understand and uh, to reveal the mysteries the revelations the truths that he's speaking here in the present okay did you all understand that or is still a mystery to all of you only Lucy understood. What about the others? Or is it still a mystery to the others? Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Deepu. Yes, yes, Gertrude. Okay. Okay, if there's no questions, then uh, we look at just one more parable, an uh, interesting parable in Luke chapter 19. So can all of you, we move from Matthew chapter 13 uh, to Luke chapter 19. So can all of you please turn to your Bibles to Luke chapter 19 or it's, uh, it's there in the publication. Um, I have the old uh, uh, publication, the Anyone knows which page it is in? 
Page 81, sister. Page 81. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, here is page 80. Okay. So Luke chapter 19, uh, verses 11 to 27. Okay. So can somebody read this, please? Luke I can read, sister. Sure, Deepu. Now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten miners and said to them, do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came to the first, saying, Master, your miner has earned ten miners, and he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Master, your miner has earned five miners. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Master, here is your miner, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you, because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit, and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, Out of your own mouth I will judge you. You wicked servant, you knew what I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank, that at my coming I might have collected with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the miner from him, and give it to him who has ten miners. But they said to him, Master, he has ten miners. For I say to you, that to everyone who has uh, will be given, and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reason over them and slay them before me. Amen. Thank you, um, Deepu. So here uh, we see, you know, uh, uh, the uh, Jesus is talking about stewardship. Um, we also uh, looked at uh, another parable in Matthew chapter 25 earlier. And in both these uh, parables, Jesus is teaching about stewardship. Okay. And um, here we see that, you know, a man went away to receive a kingdom. And it is referring to Jesus himself. Jesus is, uh, has gone now to receive a kingdom from his father. Okay. And uh, he, before he, he went, the man called 10 of his servants and he delivered to them 10 minas. And he said to them, do business till I come. Okay. Now, the King James Version says, occupy till I come. The New King James Version, the Bible, uh, King James Version says, do business. So what are we supposed to do? What is Jesus saying we are supposed to do? So Jesus is this, um, you know, a person who goes uh, to, you know, bring the kingdom, to receive his kingdom, okay? Is a certain noble man who went far away, country, uh, far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So Jesus is that noble man. And uh, he called 10 of his servants. So those 10 servants are, you know, us. And he has uh, given us these, uh, you know, uh, 10 minas. Okay. So here, you know, what are we supposed to do? Teach, preach, and demonstrate it's his works. Okay. Works. Okay. But what is the nobleman saying here? 
telling the 10 people who is given 10 minas? What is he telling them? What is he telling his 10 servants? It's there in verse uh, 13 in your Bibles or in the, you know, if you're following the publication, it's there. What does he say? To do the work of what Jesus did. Do business till I come. Ah, he says, do business till I come. Mm. Okay. So here what Jesus is saying is, you know, he's telling people, engage in this world, get into this world. That means be part of the commerce of this world, be part of the transactions that are happening in this world. You know, uh, we I said that in the King James Version, it says occupy. Occupy does not mean, you know, just sit in your house and not doing anything. Occupy means do business, you know, take ground, gain territory. Okay, um, and you know, um, for uh, you know, uh, do what God has called you to uh, do. Okay, uh, you know, uh, for us as believers, uh, you know, this has been so prevalent in the church, especially for those of us who are saved. You know, we become like spiritualists. You know, we uh, as soon as we are saved, we disconnect from the world. You know, um, our physical bodies are here, but our hearts and minds are in heaven. So we are not occupying. We are not engaging with this world. We are actually in, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 we are present just uh, physically uh, in this world, but, you know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, we are just, you know, connect. We, we look like we're connected to um, heaven and we kind of live like this till, uh, you know, we're waiting for Jesus to come. And uh, Jesus is telling us this is not what you're supposed to be doing or this is not what God has told us to do or this is not what Jesus has told us to do. What he's told us to do is to, occupy to gain territory which means to do a uh, business till he comes meaning every believer every son and daughter of the kingdom you know uh, it is jesus's commission uh, for us that he wants us to do business on the earth till he comes back that means he wants us to engage in this world to get into this world you know whatever sphere of influence that he has given us whatever uh, sphere of uh, activity in this society that he's given us or he's put us into or whatever the seven mountains or the seven mind molders whether it is uh, we are people in the art world, in the entertainment and media world. We are in the in the mountain of business or education or government or religion or family. You know, this it's called the seven mountains or the seven mind molders or the seven spheres or activities in society. We can be in any one of this. Some of you can be working in the government. Some of you can be in the education field. Some of you can be in the business field. Some of you can be in the... Uh, in the art and entertainment media field, some of you can be in uh, the field of religion, you know, whatever God is saying that, you know, we need to occupy these mountains, these spheres of influence. We need to do business. We need to engage with the world. Um, we need to be in this world, you know. Uh, I, uh, I I know Jesus said we're not off, we are in this world, but we're off this world. We're not, uh, you know, we are part of this world, but we should not be living like people of this world. But it does not mean that we don't engage with people in this um, world. Okay. So uh, we need to, you know, engage in this world till he comes. We need to do business till he comes, you know, um, uh, we might think of running away, you know, just going somewhere and just isolating ourselves or being with people, just praying till Jesus is returned. But that is not what he's asking us to do. Look at what, uh, you know, um, it says, it says in verse uh, 15 that, um, you know, and so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man has gained by trading. Okay, so when the king of the kingdom receives his kingdom and he he's coming back now, 
the king of kings, the lord of lords, he's received his kingdom, he's coming back, he's commanding his servants, meaning you and me, you know, to people who he has given us and trusted us, you know, the money, you know, uh, he calls us and he asks us how much we have gained by trading. So he wants to find out what his servants have done he wants which means he wants to know you know how successful we have been in engaging in this world how much or uh, what did we do and how much did we you know uh, multiply what he has given us or how much uh, uh, you know uh, did we do to increase the influence the impact uh, you know or uh, to increase uh, uh, the kingdom of god uh, reach in this world how much did we gain by um, trading okay so we can look at this as a very nice story um, uh, yes this is a nice story this is a parable of the kingdom but this is what you know uh, the king of the kingdom wants to his kingdom to be like uh, not just what he wants but this is how his kingdom is this is what he's going to expect of you and me he will ask us how much did we gain by trading you know, uh, so some of us can say, you know, Jesus, I thought you were already rich, uh, but, you know, you're asking me for something uh, for you, you know, uh, you know, I, I didn't do anything. He just wants you to, he just wants to see how good a steward you have been, okay? And our steward is measured by how much we have gained by trading, okay? So, Jesus is going to ask us and we can tell him, you know, I thought you are rich God, you, you own the cattle on the thousand hills, everything belongs to you. Uh, uh, and you're asking me what I made for you, I've not made anything for you. But Jesus is uh, going to ask us about our stewardship, how much what we have done and how much we have gained by trading. So he's going to basically ask us, you know, what we have done with the talents that he has. Uh, placed in us what talents he has given to us how are we using our talents you know what did we do with the time that he has given us what uh, uh, he will ask us what we have done with the opportunities that he has given us now you have the opportunity to study in bible co college now what is the how are you using this opportunity to study to learn to gain insights to you know uh, learn all the doctrines the truths in god's word you know uh, he's also going to ask us, hey, what did you do with the people I put around you? I've given you people in your life. You know, how did you associate with them? What have you done? Uh, what did you do with the abilities, uh, you know, that I have given you, whether it is the intellectual abilities, you know, or whatever it is, he's going to ask us, okay? So it's important that, you know, we use our talents, the time that he's given us, the opportunities, the doors that he's opening to us, the contacts, the people that he's given, giving to us and the abilities that he has put in our lives because he is a God who is going to come back with the kingdom that he's received and he is looking for stewardship. He's looking for good stewards, for people who have gained by trading, people who have... Um, you know, use the little or the more that he's given to us to extend his kingdom here on earth, okay? Um, so the next interesting thing that we learn from this parable is that once Jesus sees uh, that we have been profitable, he rewards us, you know, uh, each one with authority over cities, you know, which is proportionate to the stewardship in this world. So if we have been good stewards in this world, that means, you know, when when Jesus comes to initiate the kingdom of God here on the earth, the thousand year millennium rule, each one of us will be given authority over cities. You know, we will be placed in uh, uh, places of authority. That is this depends or it's proportionate to the stewards that we have been in this world to what he has entrusted to us okay so we know that in the literal future kingdom that jesus is going to come here on this earth he's going to bring that kingdom he's going to initiate that kingdom you know the saints will rule the world and the saints will administer or govern uh, the nations in the literal kingdom so 
you know, that is what it means when he says, you know, he will give us authorities over, uh, uh, over cities. It can be understood in the light of this, that when he comes with his kingdom, initiates his literal future kingdom, that we will be, you know, administrators, governors in the, uh, of the nations in his literal kingdom. Okay. So it is uh, very interesting, you know, and uh, uh, to note this and also to conclude that, you know, our uh, our uh, stewardship, you know, how good a steward that we are today will affect our future role of authority in uh, the kingdom of God that is going to be initiated here in this world or the coming kingdom in this world. So it's time for us to be serious. It's time for us to be good stewards of what God has given to us uh, right here and now and uh, to do what God has called us. So that is what uh, this uh, parable means. So, you know, don't think, okay, I'm engaging in the business world, I'm in the media, art, entertainment, government, you know, on the field of education, I have to leave that, I have to go into full-time ministry. No, God has called you in that place and he has entrusted you uh, with talents, abilities, opportunities, people, contacts. Uh, we need to use that wisely and we need to be good stewards of that. And so we can pray and say, God, help me to be a good steward of what you've given to me so that I can trade and do business and I can gain uh, for your kingdom so that your kingdom can further, your kingdom can uh, spread uh, and uh, your king let your kingdom come, let your will be done uh, in my life. Uh, in the sphere of the influence that you've given to me uh, so that people can be blessed, okay? So that is uh, chapter 7 with a few parables that we have seen. I hope that was an um, uh, interesting study. Uh, any questions you all have? Any questions? All of you in class, or you all are missing? We are in class. We are not missing. <laughs> Thank you, success. Good to hear your voice. OK. Yes, any questions, any doubts? Anything you all want to say? So that the uh, last two verses, sister, 26 and 27. For I say to you that everyone who has will be given. I say to you that to everyone who has will be given and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Yeah, so we know that we, if we are not good stewards of what God has uh, given to us, if we are not bearing fruit, you know, um, what uh, is being given to us will be taken away. Even we looked at in the beginning when we studied about the parables, even uh, the mysteries of the kingdom, the revelations, the truths, you know, if, uh, if we are engaging, if we are trying to understand, if we are trying to discern the truths and the mysteries in God's word, you know, uh, God will reveal more to us. But like I said, you know, if uh, God has given us these mysteries, God has given us the truths in his word. But if we are not, you know, engaging in that, if we are not trying to uh, understand, spend time in learning and understanding, then even what little of the understanding of the mysteries that has been given to us will be taken away. Yes, sister. And bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Yes. So this is what happens in the end of the age, right? When uh, when people do not, uh, those who do not acknowledge uh, uh, Jesus as the king, um, you know, are basically his enemies and they will be uh, thrown into hell. Okay. Thank you, sister. Yes. Thank you, Lucy. Any more uh, questions?
Okay, if there are no questions, then we have um, more time. We'll move on to the next chapter, uh, chapter eight, Kingdom Authority. Okay. Now we know that uh, as part of being part of the kingdom of God, that God has given us authority. We have been vested with kingdom authority in our lives. And as believers, we need to learn how to flow in the authority, how to operate, how to walk in kingdom authority, in kingdom power and kingdom dominion. Yes, God has given us the authority. Uh, but first of all, uh, you know, some of us need to know what is the authority that God has vested in our lives. And also, even as we know what authority he's given or vested in our lives, we need to learn how to flow under that authority, how to operate in that kingdom authority, in that kingdom power and uh, dominion. Okay. Now, when Jesus introduced the kingdom of God, uh, when, when, he's, when he spoke about the kingdom of God and he said the kingdom of God is here, you know, he just did not speak about the kingdom of God, but he also demonstrated the kingdom of God. And he demonstrated the kingdom of God uh, by using the power and the authority and the dominion that was given to um, him. So um, even as he you know, spoke about the kingdom of God, even as he initiated the kingdom of God here uh, on earth, you know, and he brought the message of the kingdom. The Bible says that he went about healing sicknesses and casting out uh, demons or devils. So look at what it says in Matthew chapter 4, verses 20 to 24. So can somebody read that, please? Matthew 4, verses 20 to 24. Can somebody read that, please? Matthew 4, 23 and 24, sister, only 24. Uh, Matthew 4, 20 to 24. Okay. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James and son of Zebedee, and John his brother. In the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him, followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, demon epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Amen. So here we see that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus went about preaching and teaching in the synagogues about the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, so he went about teaching concerning the kingdom of God. And he not only made a proclamation about the kingdom of God, but he also demonstrated the kingdom of God. And how did he demonstrate the kingdom of God? How did he demonstrate kingdom authority? Healing power and authority and dominion. Yes, how did he demonstrate kingdom authority and power and dominion? Healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Yes, he healed every kind of sickness and disease and he cast out uh, demons. Okay, And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, can somebody else read that? Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, please. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Amen. Thank you, Deepu. So, you know, what is the evidence that Jesus gave that the kingdom of God is here? What is the evidence that Jesus gave that the kingdom of God is here? We just read that in verse 28. Demons. 
Yes, he says, you know, the uh, he says the devils have been cast out by the spirit of God, meaning the powers of darkness have been destroyed because of the work of the Holy Spirit. And he said, this is the evidence that the kingdom of God is here. So what is the evidence that he's giving that the kingdom of God is here? He's giving the evidence through signs and wonders and miracles. So through signs, wonders and miracles, Jesus is saying, hey, the kingdom of God is here. The devil has been cast out by the spirit of God, meaning the powers of darkness have been destroyed because of the work of the Holy Spirit. And we see that Jesus teaches his disciples to do the same thing. Okay, If you turn to Matthew chapter 10, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, look at what Jesus says there. Can somebody read that please? Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Amen. Yes. Amen. So he, uh, thank you, Deepu. So here we see that he tells his disciples to do the same and he gives them the power and the authority over unclean spirits and to cast out unclean spirits and to heal all kinds of sickness and uh, disease. Look at verse um, uh, 7 of the same chapter. You know, um, can somebody read verse 7? What Jesus commanded them. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes, go ahead. Heal the sick, Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. Thank you, Deepu. So he told his disciples, I want you to go and tell the people the kingdom of heaven is here. And how do you say that the kingdom of heaven is here? Uh, you know, and how will they know that the kingdom of heaven or, or, or the kingdom of God is here? He says, when you, when you, you know, uh, preach and teach and you know uh, it is accompanied with signs miracles and wonders so when you heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out uh, demons when you do that you know uh, people will know that the kingdom of God is here so he's saying telling them when you go proclaiming the kingdom of God just don't preach and teach but heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils you know he says when you're doing this you're basically proclaiming the kingdom of God and we know that the kingdom of God comes with power okay the kingdom of God comes with a demonstration of kingdom authority and kingdom power and kingdom dominion and Jesus intends for you and me to do the same thing in our very day in our very time in our generation okay so uh, look at what Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter uh, 28 verse 19 what does Jesus say in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 can somebody read that please Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy, Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. So here Jesus is saying, uh, you know, I... Uh, you know, go and preach and teach and make disciples of all nations. He says, I want you to teach them to observe all things that I have taught you. That means Jesus is saying, I have taught you disciples. I taught you people who are close to me. I want you now to go and teach the rest and tell them exactly what to do. So what did Jesus teach them? What did Jesus uh, tell them to do? What did Jesus teach these 12 disciples and what did he tell them to do? When we just looked at it to make disciples and to baptize them in the name of Jesus. 
Okay, that is what he's saying now, Matthew 28, verse 19. But he's saying, yeah. I want you to teach him to observe the things that all the things that I have taught you. So what are the things that Jesus has taught them already? The kingdom of To demonstrate heaven the to power of the the heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give it. Yes, thank you. So here he's saying, you know, I want you to proclaim and I want you to teach and preach. And also like, uh, uh, thank you, Lucy. And like uh, you said, you know, heal the sick, raise the uh, dead, you know, cleanse the lepers. And like Deepu said, demonstrate the kingdom of God. So two things, proclaiming the kingdom of God and also demonstrate the kingdom of God. So demonstrate, proclaiming is preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God and demonstrating the kingdom of God is through science, miracles and wonders. And he's, and he's told his disciples that I want you to do the same thing and I also want you to teach the others who believe in me, I want them to do the same thing. So uh, does Jesus want us to also do the same thing today in our time, in our age? Yes. You know, uh, I believe that the Lord Jesus wants you and me to do the same thing in our day, uh, to proclaim the kingdom of God. Um, and even as we uh, proclaim the kingdom of God and teach the kingdom of God, uh, we can demonstrate the power, the authority and the dominion of the kingdom of God into our circumstances, into our environments or the spheres of influence that, uh, that God has placed us in. Okay, so he wants us to demonstrate the kingdom authority and the kingdom uh, power. Now you can say, how can I do that? Uh, it's okay, you know, Jesus could do it. It's okay with the 12 apostles. It's okay also with the early church, but who am I? Now we need to know who we are. We've already seen that in chapter one, we studied, you know, that, uh, and we also studied in the previous chapter, we learned that, you know, we are part of the kingdom of God. We are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in us. It might be small, insignificant, but has the power to invade and move and influence our world and our spheres, our environment. And uh, we also learned in chapter one that we are a hair of God and that we are joint hairs with Jesus Christ. And if you remember in chapter one, I said, in chapter two, I said that, you know, it's God's original plan. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, we studied when Jesus uh, said, you know, uh, come blessed, inherit uh, the kingdom that was prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Okay, so remember in the beginning when I, I told you about the story about how he separates the sheep and the goats and he says, come you, you know, uh, blessed, inherit the kingdom which was prepared for you before the foundation of the um, world. Okay, so this we studied right at the beginning, the first chapter. So it is God's intent to have a kingdom where people would inherit that a kingdom, which means we will be co heirs uh, with him in that kingdom. We will be heirs of God and co-heirs of Jesus Christ in that uh, kingdom. So this is what we already studied, just reiterating um, that. So as heir in the kingdom, we inherit that kingdom and also we inherit the authority of that kingdom that is flowing uh, through us. So the kingdom authority is vested in us. You know, you and I are a heir of the kingdom, the authority of God of the king of the kingdom is just flowing through us. And, um, you know, he wants us to inherit his kingdom and uh, to be powerful in his kingdom, not just proclaiming his kingdom, but also demonstrating the power and the authority of his kingdom. Okay, we'll stop here. Our time is up. Um, anyone has any questions, anything that you want to say? I hope even as we are learning so many truths about the kingdom of God, you know, all of you are uh, practicing it, putting into uh, your lives, making it part of your lives. And, you know, so that you're flowing with kingdom authority and power and kingdom thinking, kingdom lifestyle and, king and bringing that kingdom culture and influencing the world that God has uh, given you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. If there are no questions, we'll end class. Uh, we have another class. I also have to teach another class. Thank you.
Thank you, Angeline, for your response. Thank you. God bless everyone. See you all next week. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. I'm grateful. I enjoyed this. This today, I enjoyed it. Thank you, uh, success, Enoch. Thank you so much.